Cape Town at the Science Centre. I hope you enjoyed that performance by uh, the Blues Brewers with a song called Caroline. But well, we're not talking about Caroline here in Cape Town. Science, technology and innovation. That's what we're all about this morning. Now, last month, uh, the discovery of three supermassive black holes caused excitement in the world of radio astronomy and also highlighted that South Africa uh, is very powerful when it comes to this field. The discovery was made by local scientists Dr. Roger Dean, who is joining me this morning uh, to tell us a little bit about that. He is a fellow at the Square Kilometer Array and as well joining us this morning is uh, Dr. Sibisi. He is uh, with uh, the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research. We're going to be talking more about what uh, they are involved with as well. Dr. Dean, let me start with you uh, at uh, SKA. So this exciting news, what does it mean for someone like me? Black holes, what is that all about? Well, a black hole is a region of space-time that's so dense that not even light can escape. Uh -huh. um, and what we found was three of these systems that are orbiting very close to one another. Uh, now that's interesting because as um, these black holes evolve and as they spiral into one another, uh, as you, if you fast forward that in time, they'll eventually emit um, detectable gravitational waves. These are ripples in the fabric of space-time uh, predicted by Einstein's general theory of relativity. So what does that mean for us as a country, for the science field? Well, I think, I think the, the discovery that we made uh, is an indication of the um, rapidly growing radio astronomy community here in the country because um, really this relied on a diverse range of expertise and skills, scientific and technical, um, from s four South African institutions. Um, as well as our international collaborators. So I think, I think it's one, one example of many that you're going to be seeing from the radio astronomy community um, as, we, as we become a global hub for, for radio astronomy and the lead up to Meerkat, the African VLBI network and, and the SKA. So when news like uh, uh, this uh, come out from SKA, uh, you with the, the, the scientific uh, you know, research, what, where does it put us? What does it say? Does it get us excited? Does it say, you know, we're going where we want to go as a country, Doctor? Well, yes, uh, there are, I suppose, two aspects to um, the science and uh, research work that we look at as a country. The one aspect has to do with this riveting fundamental physics, which is about um, enabling us to be part of the community of uh, researchers, or international community, that is taking forward advancing uh, science, getting to have a better understanding of our universe. Uh, the other component has to do with taking um, uh, scientific uh, knowledge that is uh, known uh, and applying it to make a, a direct difference and uh, an impact on people's lives, on the economy and so on. So, and so the mandate of the CSR is more on the latter. So does it make us globally competitive? I mean, yesterday you had a, a presentation on, on, on innovation. Now, these are some yeah. of the things that uh, Dr. Dean is working on, you're yeah. talking about and saying, yes, we are getting there. Yeah. How but being go? globally competitive is ultimately all about knowledge. Mm -hmm. and, and knowledge comes in a variety of forms, um, in the form of uh, um, basic science in, in, in the form of um, more applied science, in the form of the uh, know-how, the uh, wherewithal to, to, to get things done, to build things, to have better processes, uh, to mine better and so on. Um, Dr. Dean, what impact will this have on other astronomy projects, you know, not just in our country but, but in the continent and, and globally? Well, our discovery relied very critically on, the, um, on a technique called very long baseline interferometry. Um, or VLBI. This is a bunch of radio telescopes that are separated by very large distances, up to 10,000 kilometers. Um, and I think this demonstrates the kind of cutting-edge science that can be done with that technique, uh, specifically with the, the upcoming African VLBI network. Um, more than that, it, it, it links to gravitational waves, which is uh, a very different kind of experiment that Meerkat and the Square Kilometer Array will do. Um, Dr. Smithy, the, the role of, of, of um, your institution in, in, in job creation, poverty alleviation, we're talking about inequality, and, and we're trying to take the country to, to the next level. Uh, let me give two very quick examples. One is um, trying to assist existing industry to um, be more efficient. We have, for example, uh, what we refer to as a, a cleaner production center at CSIR, which provides training to people in industry uh, to learn to save in ways that are not this, uh, perhaps subtle, not necessarily very obvious, not just changing light bulbs, but much more than that. And just in that area alone, we believe we've made a difference of uh, you know, several hundred million rand in, in cost saving. That's the one element, uh, intervention of, uh, science, of technology in that way. The other has to do with uh, doing more fundamental work in trying to allow South Africa to be a part of uh, the community 
activity that is involved, for example, in value addition of the mineral resources that we are endowed with as a country. So we are looking at the moment at, uh, for example, taking titanium and not just mining it and uh, sending it abroad, but to make products out of titanium right here in this country. That, that requires a great deal of knowledge uh, um, and that requires um, a, a, a great deal of background uh, research before we can get to a point where we can say we have a titanium industry. But when we do, we can make products we can export and create um, a whole new area of industry and therefore create high-tech jobs. Um, Dr. Dean, um, you're a postdoctoral fellow at uh, SKA. So um, for you, what the role of, of, of uh, the uh, institution like uh, CSIR as well as the department, uh, does that help you achieve the goals that you've set out for yourself? And how do you see your contribution to you know, taking our country to the next level when it comes to science, technology and innovation? Well, I think there's a, a broad range for a number of players within the science technology sector, um, as Dr. Sinti has, has discussed. And, um, you know, the part of being part of that community and, and, and shifting to a knowledge based economy is, um, is just one of the broad uh, uh, goals of, of scientists in this country. And I, we play one small part in, in terms of the Blue Skies research. What do, you th what do you think places like the science centers uh, can do for, for young people in our, in our community so that, you know, 10 years from now we have more Dr. Deans? Exposure is key. I mean, uh, what I've seen since since the, the publication of, of, of this paper is a lot of young people, a lot of learners uh, contacting me and saying, wow, this is really amazing stuff. How, how can I get involved? And mm. I think the Science Centre plays a, a very good, uh, a, a critical role in, 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 in exposing young learners to the wonders of science mm. um, enough that they, 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 they take that forward and actually get, uh, so pursue careers in there. So they expose and it just doesn't sound like Dr. Dean is up to strange things things by himself actually no, no, he's doing something that is visible that they no, can the see SK is yeah. Yeah, and it's a very cool thing it's to a work cool on thing to work on mm. really sounds exciting now the CSSR is involved in numerous uh, interesting science and technology projects how does this uh, these projects impact on ordinary South Africans lives uh, the, the two examples I raised earlier um, of um, the cleanup production titanium th those indeed are, are, are things that uh, impact directly or uh, indirectly on, on the lives of people but let me give you another example work on climate change yes uh, to, to better understand um, our oceans our earth our environment so that we can better predict for example what impact this is going to, to have on our crops and on agriculture and so on these are very real impacts on our, on our fishing um, uh, 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 industry well. and so on yeah. uh, you know and, and I'm delighted by the way that I'm, I'm sharing a stage with a, 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 a young scientist here because I think ultimately this is um, a game must be a game where we have young people coming in and replenishing uh, the, 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 the human capital. It's, it's, it's about people uh, more than it's about anything else. People, knowledge, economy, yeah. and it's all about alleviating poverty, inequality, and unemployment in our country. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for talking uh, to us this morning. Right here on Sunrise from Cape Town. We're going for an ad break, and we continue to make your morning exciting right here on ETV and Plus.